stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. meeting is officially called to order. Roll call, please. Trustee Eves. Present. Trustee Lilly. Present. Trustee Dunlap. Present. Trustee Blakey. Present. Trustee Clark. Present. Trustee Marshall. All right. Is there anyone here tonight that is interested in addressing the board? If so, you may come forward now. All right. If not, we'll move on. Is there a motion to approve minutes dated March 14, 2023? Motion. Motion by Dunlap. Is supported. it supported? Supported by Eves. Roll call. Eves. Yes. Lily. Yes. Dunlap. Yes. Blakey. Yes. Clark. Yes. That motion carries. Is there a motion to approve the special meeting minutes dated March 23, 2023? Motion. Supported. Motion by Lily. Supported by Dunlap. Roll call. Eves. Yes. Lily. Yes. Dunlap. Yes. Blakey. Yes. Clark. Yes. That motion carries. We'll now move on to our standing committee reports, starting with Public Works. Good evening. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'd like to thank everybody who took the time to come out and vote. Um, everyone who is running uh, really appreciates it. And we will keep trying to keep our village going in the direction it's going now. We love our village. Thank you so much. And no Public Works report. Thank you. Economic development. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. I have uh, just a few things. Um, number one, uh, you all know that our last meeting was postponed so that the board could go to the National League of Cities uh, Congressional Conference. Uh, that conference had a theme of people plus, partnership, plus partners equals possibilities. It was an excellent, um, I think, three-day um, uh, congressional conference, we had an opportunity, we, the entire board, had the opportunity um, to meet with representatives, of, a representative, uh, Kevin Randall, uh, from, uh, from Congressman Kelly's um, office uh, to further the conversation about the possibility of us having a new zip code for the village of Linwood. That was a very fruitful conversation and one that will uh, continue. The mayor had a call with the um, with a uh, an agent from the U.S. Postal Service while we were there uh, um, in D.C., and all of those talks are continuing. Uh, we also met with uh, Tammy Duckworth's office uh, to talk about some of the same things and also some economic development opportunities and take a picture um, with her. And so the trip was uh, very well worthwhile, as well as all of the breakout uh, uh, sessions that we, uh, um, that we had. I met personally with a uh, mayor from Savannah, Georgia, um, who has started a successful youth council in his, in, in his village. And he's supposed to be forwarding, forwarding me uh, the information um, so that we can see about doing something like that um, here. That's all I have for economic development. Uh, Madam Mayor, may I move on? Yes. Uh, community affairs. Uh, we have three things coming up. Uh, May 12th, uh, Mother's Day bingo. Uh, May 13th, uh, little, uh, the Little League Appreciation Day, uh, which is going to be right there in... Um, Lake Linwood uh, uh, Park, um, and then uh, the May 29th coffee with a veteran that's going to happen on uh, May the uh, 29th. We're looking forward to that. Um, just a couple of comments. I wanted to follow up on uh, something that uh, Trustee Dunlap um, brought up about the, uh, about the vote. Our voter turnout this time was only 7%, <coughs> which is a very sad state of affairs for a community that almost has 10,000. Um, people, you've heard me say several times um, before that as soon as we can get um, our voter population up to vote every time we have an election, we don't have to argue as much and fight as much with uh, state and federal officials to get resources for uh, this particular um, village. And so I just want to encourage everyone here as well as everyone listening um, online to please take advantage of each opportunity that you have. Um, to, um, um, to vote. I do have uh, another concern, uh, Madam Mayor, if I can address it real quick. Is that okay? Yes. Um, <clears throat> there was a, uh, th this board has been uh, tremendously supportive uh, of the Sand Ridge School Board. 
uh, the Stanford School Board has a new superintendent, uh, Superintendent Nalls, who has just done some fabulous work. Um, she has uh, set forth a vision uh, to have that school a, to become a blue ribbon school um, within a matter of uh, years. Uh, I myself, as well as several members of several uh, of my colleagues here uh, on the board, have attended those board meetings and have been extremely supportive. <clears throat> and I was extremely um, concerned, and I, I'll just leave it at that. I was con uh, extremely concerned when I read in the Tribune uh, that Mr. Caldwell, that you had. Um, uh, uh, went against and objected to a number of the um, school board members uh, petitions. Now I'm not making an argument for uh, school board members and their petitions in terms of um, the legalities of them or the correctness of them or anything like that. But I would think that when the board is trying, this is the first school that we've had in the village of Linwood. And I would think that when a board is putting forth efforts to um, increase and improve the quality of education in the village of Linwood, that there wouldn't be residents that would be going against that. Um, and so I just wanted to state publicly of my concern um, about that and my disappointment about that. That's all I have, Madam Mayor. All righty. Trustee Lilly. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I would first like to just give a word of support to you, to Trustee Blakey concerning voter apathy. Um, it is something we've discussed openly, and it's something that we can do better in in our community. Um, and hopefully, as we look forward to new elections that come our way, both locally and nationally, that we talk to our neighbors, our friends, and even young people who are approaching the voting age to get out and vote because we're seeing a turn of the tides throughout this nation. And if no one votes different people in to speak to your issues, those issues don't get addressed. So thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, Madam Mayor, I'd like to continue with planning and zoning. I have no report there. I'd like to move on to ordinances and resolutions. Go ahead. All right, I have, uh, I'm seeking a motion on a second read, action taking, ordinance number 23-07. An ordinance of the Village of Linwood, Illinois, amending the Code of the Village of Illinois, Chapter 22, Business and Business Regulations. There's a motion. Is it supported? Supported. supported. Motion by Lily, supported by Eves. Attorney Boyle. Yes, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, this ordinance uh, was up for first reading back on the March 14th uh, meeting. And what it does, if enacted, is it would establish a late fee for business license holders that do not submit a timely application for a renewal of their business license. Uh, it's come to you on the recommendation of the village clerk. Uh, apparently, we have uh, uh, some people that are chronically not as timely as they could be. Uh, so what this would do is if it's not time, uh, the license application for a renewal is not submitted in a timely fashion. The uh, late fee that would be established is, uh, is $75, and that's for each calendar month that it's late. Roll call. Eves. Yes. Lily. Yes. Dunlap. Yes. Blakey. Yes. Clark. Yes. The motion carries. Very good. The next item I have, I'm seeking a motion of first read, no action taken, ordinance number 2308, an ordinance of the village of Linwood, Illinois amending the village fee schedule. There's a motion. Is it supported? Supported. Motion by Lily, supported by Dunlap. Attorney Boyle? Yes. Uh, what's up here for first reading is a ordinance to amend your fee schedule. And again, the primary impact of the amendments have to do with uh, business licenses. Your, uh, your businesses uh, that are brick and mortar, your peddler licenses, your door-to-door -door solicitor licenses. Uh, whenever someone makes an application for one of those sorts of licenses, one of the uh, standard components of the license application process is a background check. And the uh, reason for the ordinance here is that the costs that are being charged to the village for conducting those background checks have increased. Uh, they were previously a $25 charge, and my understanding is that the uh, uh, the fee now for that background check has gone up to $50. Uh, 
so what the ordinance does is adds the background check fee as a specific component that's separate from the application fee itself that way you've got the cost of the background check covered um, anytime someone wants to make an application the other thing that this ordinance does is it establishes a rental fee for your parks uh, to, if they want to use the clubhouse or the gazebo uh, any of those dedicated areas for your liberty or memorial park i believe it is for lakewood Thank you. So, uh, so it, it establishes that fee. Uh, you already have a permit agreement or a rental agreement, I should say, that's out there. So this is just to uh, line all of that up. Roll call. Eves. Yes. Lily. Yes. Dunlap. Yes. Blakey. Yes. Clark. Yes. That motion carries. Thank you. The next item I have, I'm seeking a motion first read, no action taken on resolution number 23-09. A resolution authorizing the village president to execute an artist engagement contract with SOS Band slash DIT dash LLC. There's a motion. Is it supported? Supported. Motion by Lily, supported <coughs> by Eves, Attorney Boyle. Uh, yes, this resolution comes for first reading. It, uh, it's just ex it's exactly what Trustee Lily had described it as. It's an artist engagement contract. Uh, SOS Band is a uh, musical act that the village is interested in bringing in uh, with the uh, support of uh, one of its uh, new business holders, uh, Body and Mind, uh, to perform at the, I believe it's the Southland Expo Center. Uh, should, uh, should the contract be worked out, it's all subject to uh, finalization and review by our office as counsel for the village. The reason it's coming to you is because the stature of the band is such that the uh, fee that they're requesting exceeds the uh, the amount that would the mayor would have authority under the uh, ordinances that just proceed with seeking approval on. So. Okay. Roll call. Eves. Yes. Lily. Yes. Dunlap. Yes. Blakey. Yes. Clark. Yes. That motion carries. Very good. The final item I have, I'm seeking a motion. First read, no action taken on resolution number 23-10, a resolution establishing fee for use of the village of Linwood's fire hydrant. There's a motion, is it supported? Supported. Motion by Lily, supported by Eves, <coughs> Attorney Boyle. Yes, uh, this comes on for first reading. Your code of ordinances already establishes a rate that would be charged to any resident or any business for use, metered use, of a uh, fire hydrant within the village. Usually it's for some kind of a construction project or renovation project. Um, as uh, uh, costs have gone up on, on other things, so they do uh, with water, uh, there is going to be an increase in the cost paid by the village uh, that it's been advised of from the village of Lansing, which is its conduit to, uh, to the water. Um, the final amount and what that rate would be under the new ordinance uh, still has to be uh, uh, finalized. It looks like it'd be a smaller increase on residents, but a larger increase on a business's use. Uh, the, the rate is at a per thousand gallons used uh, out of the fire hydrant. Um, soft numbers on those, uh, the business rate uh, would go from uh, $5 to, I believe, 15 and then uh, at the residential rate, that rate was also currently five. Uh, still looking at what that might look like in a final form. Uh, preliminary uh, talks on it make it seem like that will be a smaller increase over the five dollars. But again, the uh, the impetus for it is being told by Lansing that the rates that the village is going to be charged are uh, are also going up. Roll call, please. Eves. Yes. <coughs> Lily. Yes. Dunlap. Yes. Blakey. Yes. Clark. Yes. That motion carries. Mayor, I'd just like to share one positive note, if at all possible, with uh, Fire Chief uh, Alston. I would like to thank uh, your team and your deputy chief for the uh, residential fire uh, smoke detector program. For seniors, they came out to my home, um, alerted me to the fact that I was underserved as far as fire extinguishers were concerned and um, monoxide detectors as well. They took down the old ones, installed new 10-year ones, as well as um, 
went through the entire home and also I was able to contact neighbors so not only did they take care of me they service two other seniors on my block this is an excellent program uh, the awareness that was brought about as far as home and fire safety was, was out parallel I, I just didn't realize I was under utilizing my my smoke detectors so kudos to your department thank you again uh, Madam Mayor that concludes my report thank you thank you Health and wellness, Tracy. Okay. So this month of April brings National Alcohol Awareness Month, National Month of Hope, National Canine Fitness Month, Distracted Driving Awareness Month, National Child Abuse Awareness Month, Month of the Military Child, so go out and hug those kids, National Autism Awareness Month, National Brunch, Brunch Month, and National Afternoon Tea Month. Green tea or matcha tea is good for weight loss, while cinnamon tea is good for stabilizing your glucose. The good news is yesterday, President Biden signed a bill ending the COVID-19 national emergency. But the end of the public health emergency, you'll see that around all of the hospitals, is not scheduled to end until May 11th. There's, they still have to finish that vote. So continue to be diligent. After May 11th, What's going to happen is you may not get COVID tests for free anymore. Um, you may have to pay for them. But the vaccinations will still be covered for free. So if you still need a COVID vaccine, booster, or test, call Cook County Department of Public Health at 833-308-1988. And that is the end of my report. Thank you. Finance. Good evening, everyone. I would like to thank everyone that did come out and vote. Uh, this was, I was appointed to this seat, so this was my first time being on the ballot, and um, I was happy with people that did come out to vote, so thank you for doing that. And yes, we can, as a village, we must uh, get our numbers up so that, as uh, Trustee Blakey said, when we go and ask for things from the state and the federal government, they can look and see that our village is voting. But I would like to thank those that did come out and vote. Uh, I am seeking approval to approve a uh, bill payment memo, a motion to approve bill payment memo 1468 and the total week cash disbursement of $381,853.39, which includes payroll for the period of March 5th, March 5th through March 18th, 2023 and the amount of $151,405.21. There's a motion, is it supported? Supported. Motion by Eve, supported by Dunlap, roll call. Eves. Yes. Lily. Yes. Dunlap. Yes. Blakey. Yes. Clark. Yes. That motion carries. Uh, Madam Mayor, I would like to, uh, I would like to let the residents know about a scholarship opportunity and a grant opportunity. The Village of Linwood Educational Scholarship for High School Seniors pursuing an undergraduate degree or professional trade certificate are being accepted until June 16th. Applicants must be a resident of Linwood, have a minimum grade point average of 3.0, show proof of acceptance to an accredited institution, have participated in at least one extracurriculum activity, provide three letters of recommendation, and write a 500-word essay. Applications are available in the lobby of Village Hall, and you can contact me, Trustee Cynthia Eves, at c.eves at villageoflinwood.net. There is a grant opportunity. The state of Illinois is offering a total of $175 million in grants for businesses and industries hardest hit by the pandemic that were established before March 12, 2020. Restaurants, hotels, and businesses and, and, and businesses in the creative arts industry may apply beginning April 5th, 2023 until May 10th, 2023. Businesses that have previously received recovery funding through other state programs are eligible to apply. Full eligibility details can be found by visiting the website dceo.illinois.gov forward slash small biz B-I-Z assistance forward slash B2B. And that concludes my report. Thank you. 
There's no public safety report tonight. We'll now move on to our department reports beginning with police. Thank you, Madam Mayor. On April 1st, 2023, Linwood police officers were called to 20109 Catalpa Avenue for a domestic disturbance. When officers arrived, they were met by a UPS driver who stated that he had a female in his truck who witnessed, he witnessed being beat and dragged by a male subject. The female victim was nude, bleeding, and had been visibly beaten. Officers were able to speak with the victim in the ambulance, and she stated the following. Victim had broken up with her ex-boyfriend a few weeks ago, had gone back to his home to retrieve some items. The ex-boyfriend refused to let the victim leave after she arrived and severely beat and strangled her for over five hours. The victim stated she was beaten in the face, head, and stomach, and had passed out on a number of occasions while being strangled. The victim tried a number of times to flee the home and begged for her life, but the ex-boyfriend stripped her naked of her clothes to keep her from leaving and stated he would kill her if she left. The victim finally made a run for the front door, believing she was going to be killed, made it outside, running down the street, still without any clothes when the ex-boyfriend caught her and began to drag her back to the home while beating her. The victim broke free, ran for the UPS driver who was parked nearby, and called the police. The offender immediately fled the area, knowing the police were called. Unable to locate the offender, detectives re-interviewed the victim, contacted the state's attorney's office felony review division, and presented them the facts of the case. An arrest warrant for attempted murder, domestic battery with strangulation, and kidnapping has been issued for this subject. On April 1st, 2023, Linwood officers were called to 2398 Glenwood Dyer Road, the mobile gas station, reference a battery and a robbery. Officers spoke with the victim as well as the station clerk who stated that the victim had walked into the gas station, exchanged words between the victim and a couple customers. Customers appeared upset because the victim walked in between the two customers and bumped them. When the victim walked up to the counter to pay for his items, one customer struck the victim in the head, which caused the victim to strike his head on the concrete floor, knocking him unconscious. The two customers then went through the victim's pocket, stealing his money, wallet, and cell phone, all which was caught on the store surveillance cameras. Both offenders left the store, walked immediately to the victim's truck, which was parked by the pumps, entered the truck, and removed items from the victim's truck and fled the area. Officers searched the area, area and were able to locate both offenders, take them into custody. Both offenders were read their Miranda rights, gave statements admitting to their involvement. The offenders were charged with felony robbery, battery, and burglary to motor vehicle. On April 5th, 2023, Linwood officers were sent to a residence for an unresponsive male subject. When officers arrived, his mother stated that her son was a heroin addict and appeared to have overdosed, was in the bathroom unresponsive and not sure if he was breathing. Sergeant Sporowski grabbed his issued Narcan nasal spray, administered it to the victim. After a minute or two, the victim regained consciousness and was transported to the hospital. The opioid problem is very serious, and I'm happy that we have trained and provided all of our officers with this life-saving medication. I want to thank the owners of Lola's Cafe, Renee and Larry Bova, for donating life hammers for every Linwood police car. These are specially made hammers, which allow you to shatter vehicle glass and cut seat belts. The Bova saw the video of the Linwood officers breaking out the windshield of the car to save a man's life and want to provide Linwood with enough of these special tools for each car. So I want to thank both of the Bovas for supporting the Linwood Police Department. Linwood Little League opening day parade will be May 13th at 9 a.m. Teams will meet at PK Pantry, then parade down 198th, 198th Street to the fields. The Linwood Police and Fire Departments will be pr providing escorts as well as hot dogs and hamburgers to all players and coaches once at the field. Food is being donated by Rob's Meats. Please come out and support the Linwood Little League. And Mother's Day Bingo will be May 12th at Linwood Village Hall. Please contact Erica Madry or Sergeant Weinbreck to RSVP. And crime stats for March 14th through April 9th. There was 14 arrests, 124 traffic stops, 77 citations, 20, 26 domestic disturbances, 142 bar checks, and 10 guns recovered. And Madam Mayor, that concludes my report. Thank you. Fire Department. Uh, Mayor, can I ask the Chief a quick question? Chief, uh, 
the uh, image on the back. Is that the the gentleman from the first page? Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor. Uh, so the stats for the fire department, call volumes from uh, 314 to 49 are uh, 76 ambulance calls. They had three motor vehicle accidents with injuries. They had two motor vehicle accidents without injuries. Uh, one, I mean, I'm sorry, three invalid assists. They have two calls that were dispatched to but canceled en route. Uh, they have one station coverage with mutual aid where they went to Lansing for a fire. Um, and then they had two smoke investigations and one false alarm. Uh, staffing updates for the fire department is uh, Saturday. We have four firefighters going through the agility test to move forward in the hiring process. Uh, Monday, April 17th, we have six more uh, interviewees interviewing uh, to come aboard to the fire department. Uh, four of those are certified firefighters um, and they're moving forward in the process as well. And then last but not least is the smoke detector program. Um, it's still up and running. We still have smoke detectors. If you guys need them, you guys can call the firehouse at 708 7 Five eight um, six one zero two, and they'll schedule to come out to look at your fire scene. I mean, look at your smoke detectors uh, and CO detectors, and change them if needed to the new ten-year um, smoke detectors. That ends my report. Thank you. Public Works. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I got a few things on the agenda. Just want to let everybody know that chipping has started. Our next chipping week will be April twenty-fifth. We do ask all of our residents to just place all of your branches neatly in the parkway and separate your stumps from your branches. Just make it easy on the guys to make sure that we clean up everything properly and we pick up everything. We did start repairing uh, B-Box repairs, which is the valve that runs into your house for the, your water service. We did hand out notices to all the residents about the, the project and also the restoration. The restoration will be done once the ground settles. Um, so hopefully within a month, two months, again, just depending on how it settles, we don't want to put down restoration and the ground keeps sinking. So we want to make sure it's done properly the first time. Um, myself and one of the other water operators did go to WaterCon. We're able to speak with the IEPA about all the new uh, res reports and uh, regular uh, res regulations that are coming out sorry and um, luckily we're up to date with everything and now we got all of our credits so we should be up to date with our license um, we have no water water main breaks to report which is a good thing <laughs> I know a lot of people have been asking about the water fountains and the speed bumps they will be going in May 1st and also just a quick reminder that we are doing shutoffs April 13th which is Thursday so I just ask that all the residents please pay your water bills. Um, we would hate to show up to your house. And that'd be it. Thank you. Village Engineer. Sorry. Thank you, Mayor. We're hoping to hear back from IDOT any day. We did submit our plans and specifications for the Rebuild uh, Illinois project. So uh, hopefully by next meeting, we'll be out to bid and headed towards construction. And that concludes my report. Times. Thank you. Building department. I'm sorry, finance. Thank you, ma'am. Sorry. <laughs> um, Ladabaka Naaman has completed the OPEB report and it was submitted to the auditors late last week. Um, so, any day now, we should be receiving the, the fiscal year 2021 audit. And we are uh, waiting on the auditors to set up a date to start the fiscal year 2022 audit. And that completes my report building department thank you madam mayor the number of permits issued march 15th 2023 i'm sorry yes march 15th 2023 to april the 11th 2023 was 45 and a total of permit fees eight thousand three hundred and thirty four dollars with a valuation of four hundred forty nine thousand nine hundred and seventy two Want to also remind residents that their contractors that they're using uh, for their permanent work, their registrations are due. So if you're using a contractor recently uh, and going forward into the remainder of the year, please make sure to ask them if their registration is current. That also includes your landscaping companies. We would like for them to be registered as well. They don't need a permit to perform the work of cutting your grass and trimming your trees, but they need to be registered contractors. Uh, if you have any additional questions about these two items or any other things, 
you can call us at 708-758-6101. Your option is the number four for the building department. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Attorney Boyle. Uh, no report. Madam Clerk. Yes, I'd like to report the unofficial results of the election that was held on April 4th, 2023. Cheryl Dunlap received 502 votes. That, that is 35.86%. Cynthia Eves received 453 votes, which is 32.36%. And Kirk D. Marshall received 445 votes, which is 31.79%. I did all the sentiments of the men and women on this board. Um, we have 7,276 registered voters in the village of Linwood. And this equates to a 7% turnout of voters. It, it's just, it's sad. It's sad. If you think about the history of voting, we have a right to vote, and we're not taking advantage of that. And it's just, it's really sad that we as a people don't do that. So I'm encouraging everyone, like the rest of the colleagues, my colleagues here, I'm encouraging everyone to get out and vote. Voting makes changes. If you have problems, you want to see things changed, you have to vote. And that's all I have to say right there on that. Um, these three individuals will be sworn in on May 9th. So we will swear them in on May 9th and hopefully everyone can come back out and celebrate that. Um, it's getting warm out and we're having more and more people come out to solicit whatever business that they're trying to promote. For the safety of our residents, we have a solicitor's license application that the solicitors have to um, they have to apply. With that is a background check. Our goal is to have everyone safe. We don't want anyone out in the village of Linwood soliciting and we have not checked them out. So I have a copy of what they should be wearing when they come out. It's actually a lanyard. It has their name on here. So you can actually compare the name for this lanyard to the name of the, normally they have a, an ID on them from the company that they represent. So if you ask them, if they come out to your door, ask them for their Village of Linwood solicitation lanyard, or approval, basically. This gives the name of the person that I was able to get a background check for. This gives the company that they're representing, and it also gives the approved date that they're supposed to be out here. Their solicitation date is, they have 30 days to actually go out and hit the village. And it's right here, and it's approved for, um, for those 30 days and then it is signed by me. So if you do not see this, and they're told when they come that they have to wear this when they go door to door, and we're gonna let our residents know that you know these people have to have, well, solicitors have to have this. If they don't have them, please call the police because they're not supposed to be out soliciting in our village. And then the last thing I wanted to say was village stickers go on sale May 1st. So you'll be seeing something in the mail in your water bill, so make sure you adhere to that. And that's all. That concludes my report, Madam Mayor. Mayor, I have a couple of questions for the clerk. Sure. Um, clerk, I just want to, just for clarity, mm -hmm. the solicitor's license is different from what Ms. Hurley was talking about, right? Yes. Okay, that's just for solicitors. This is just for solicitors. And what she's talking about is for contractors in the village, right? Yes. Okay, all right, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's it, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I will be brief. I um, want to say thank you to Christy De Laurentiis. She is the executive director of SSMMA. Um, most of you don't know her. You may have never heard her name, but she is an advocate for the Southland. She works really hard on us, and she's pushing the mayors to make sure that we push the right things when we are down in Springfield. She has been working with us to uh, increase LGDF. It is our portion of the state income tax. And several years ago, that percentage was reduced uh, from 10%. Uh, at the time, it was supposed to be a temporary thing, uh, and the state has yet to fully restore us, which means that 
um, in a time span from 2011 uh, through 2022, the village of Linwood has experienced $5,811,000 in lost revenue because they decrease our percentage of LGDF. And I bring this up because many of you don't. You see us smiling up here and you hear these reports, but there's so many other things that happen behind the scenes that we're working on. And this is the one, one of the things that I'm actively working on. I actually will be testifying next week down in Springfield regarding this. And I'm going to push hard because this is money that is much needed for the village of Linwood. We can do a lot for our pub with our public safety department, with our public works. We can do a lot with our streets. Um, there's so many things we need to get this entire village up up on lake water and off these septic tanks and wells. Uh, I have so many projects that I want us to focus on, but we need revenue. Uh, and so this is an opportunity for us to get some restored revenue. I am happy to say that it is moving in the right direction and it looks like um, we may move towards a gradual increase to restore us to 10%, but it's a fight and we're going to continue to fight. So that's one thing I wanted to share with the residents uh, and also publicly thank Christy for her work and for pushing us to be uh, better mayors and better advocates for our municipalities and the Southland. I do want to congratulate the trustees uh, on their recent uh, election and re-election. Um, I am uh, honored to serve with you all. I know that uh, the both of you and uh, Trustee Marshall in his absence have um, servant hearts and uh, that is one of the reasons why I enjoy working with you. You have a commitment to this village to do good things, and we're going to continue to do good things. I also uh, want to acknowledge some of our school board races. I know one has been called already, um, the other two who have not, um, but I, I see a couple of candidates out in the audience, and, and I just want to say um, it is not easy to put yourself out there. Uh, and run and um, subject yourself to scrutiny, people knocking on your door, asking you questions, getting in your business. It's just not an easy thing to do. So I applaud you for putting yourself out there. Mr. Burks, I uh, <laughs> know that was your first time, but I also want to say to you um, that you don't have to hold an elected seat to serve. And um, I expect to continue to see you in this audience. I know that you do come out to board meetings. I see you at our events, and I appreciate that. So my hope is that regardless of the election outcome, you will continue to be who you've been, and that is showing up and um, being willing to serve and be a good resident in this village. So kudos to you for sticking yourself out there. Yes, great job. Okay. And that is all I have. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion. Supported. Motion by Dunlap, supported by Lily. Roll call. Eves. Yes. Lily. Yes. Dunlap. Yes. Blakey. Yes. Clark. Yes. That motion carries. It's 639. This meeting is officially adjourned. Thank you all for coming out.